Are we are we are we getting things started now? Is this yeah? Is this yeah. a podcast? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> is it, yeah. Just just check this out first. Is that oh. too loud? No, I hear it. I hear it. Yeah, that's that sound right. Okay. Yeah, it sounds all right. Weird. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. All right. Well, so obviously, congrats on you know getting like you know this artist series with uh, uh, Mayones, um, and I, I I think it's like um, an amazing milestone for you know any musician to be able to not just be endorsed by a brand, but to also have like you know a, a very um, unique um, signature series. So congrats to you on that. And that's the seven. Oh, damn. Thank you so much, man. All right. Well, if you ever don't want that, remember I'm first in line. So thanks. <laughs> all right, all right. Just, just give me, just send me your address, and we'll do it. All right, I'll do that like right now. <laughs> yeah, right. man. Um, what can I say? It's a very, very beautiful and expensive piece of wood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, know. I know. Like, I mean, like, I think you've been with them for like what six years now. I said that. I. I said that in the so. video. Yeah. Wait, I said that, that in the video. But then then I started counting. Videos. Yeah. I started counting. Um it's probably more been more than six years now. I think probably closer to seven or yeah. eight since we actually touched base and side contact. Ah. Um but a lot of people don't realize that. Um, especially people who are fans of kind of Polaris and don't know the the whole YouTube side of things because mm -hmm. um, a lot of the time it can be like oh yeah I discovered Polaris because of your YouTube but you know sometimes mm -hmm. it can be the other way around yep. um, so that's that's really awesome to see happening because for, for a lot of the time it was just people coming up to me at shows and going oh when are you going back onto YouTube and, <laughs> And now it's just like I'm doing my thing. I'm I'm still able to connect with a lot of fans that have been very, very, very loyal mm -hmm. to me. And um, all I've ever wanted to do is to play music. And um, I'm 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 not kind of like it, it may seem like I kind of disappeared off the internet <laughs> suddenly, but. But I do owe so much to you know that that initial kind of following I had, and mm -hmm. I owe so much to it. But um, back to the point, I've always just wanted to play guitar. That's all I've wanted to do, and to be able to do that live mm -hmm. and with my own music, mm -hmm. and you know, build a career uh, uh, upon that. It's just. It's a very special thing for me, and um, I, I take none of this. I take none of this for granted, yeah. especially especially now. You know, having having shows taken away from you. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> you don't you don't you really don't realize how much you miss these things, and maybe how much you necessarily kind of not saying I did, but you know, take advantage of some of these moments that you have in your life. You know, after when you're doing something for so long. It gets a little, you know, not boring, but um, I think every musician, every touring musician right now is just ready to fucking play. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but um, yeah. it's it's a crazy well burn, and it's, it's I've been playing guitar I think for about, geez, close to twelve, thirteen years now. So it's it's pretty much my life. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, and I, I think it's kind of true because, like, um, a lot of obviously as musician, as as a musician yourself, I mean, I think at some points you get like a bit tired. You wish you had a break, and then, um, yeah. you know, obviously when this happens, everyone's like, "Shit, all the shows are being canceled. Our wish yeah. just came true," you know. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it, in a bad way, and then now everyone's just, you know. Um, musicians are are itching to get back out there, and then fans at the same time are you know itching to go go back to shows. You know, be, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> exactly, exactly, and be precise what you wish for. Actually, that's what be, I say. <laughs> be extremely, extremely fucking precise. Sorry, am I allowed? <laughs> <All right. laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, like. Um, 
So then you said you've been playing uh, mayonnaise, like, uh, I'm sorry, you've been playing guitar for like, you know, over 10 years now. So what, uh, what sort of led you to decide that, you know, the mayo was your choice? I mean, obviously you've tried other guitars, you've had like your music man. And um, so then what led you, you to think um, mayo is the way to go? Dan, you really have brushed up on your history, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to. It's, it's kind yeah. of like my responsibility, you know? <laughs> yeah. um, you know what? I've, I've had the luxury of playing a lot of guitars, man. Um, a lot of different companies as, as well. I think very early on, my parents kind of um, saw potential within me. And um, I, f I feel very privileged to have had supportive parents all, all my life so you know when when they when they see a kid investing you know 12 hours of their day you know if you work because 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 this was always like a little thing that people on youtube were kind of like curious about it's like oh how's this kid getting all this gear <laughs> <laughs> but uh the working age the working age in australia is actually like 14 and nine months mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you know, between kind of teaching, because that's what I, that's what I've always done. I think, I don't even think I've had a real job before. <laughs> so kind of between doing that and, you know, it's just been personal growth over the years. It's like, you know, you count, you get, you save a bit of money and then you look into these brands and it's just like, wow, okay, there's so much to choose from. <laughs> um, but uh, I think what made me what made me stick with Mayer is like I I just really back the company and I like the ethos of the company and um, their guitars they just feel there's this like you, you know with like vintage guitars how they're worn in and people like to say they you know they have that worn in played in but this just has that and. It's kind of difficult to describe because you can say, oh, yeah, I, you can put a maple top on there. You can put a ash ash body, but mm -hmm. it's more than that. It's like, you don't, it's kind of a risk until you get the instrument in your hands. Mm -hmm. And um, that was a risk I took, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, had, I had never actually played these guitars before. Um, let me actually grab you the my first first, one. The first one. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you recognize it from my my YouTube because yeah. yeah. So I took I took the risk, and I saved up my pennies, <laughs> <laughs> and I ordered this from a very nice man called uh, named Bob Koopman in Belgium. Uh -huh. so I, I actually paid for this one. Oh. Uh, so I. Worked very long and very hard to be able to save up to grab a piece as beautiful as this. Um, as you can see, it's been my touring guitar for the past seven years. It's, nice. it's banged up. It's dented. Like, it, there's so much road rash on it. Yeah. But, like, you see these guitars and they're supposed to be perfect and pretty, but this one's, this one's worn in. And <laughs> <laughs> but it's, well, it's, it's just got that feel to it, you know, that kind of played in. Mm -hmm. feel which i really like yeah i think it's just one guitar that you've played so long that you know yeah. um it, it feels right because uh mm. you've your your fingers and your muscles kind of get you kind of had the time to get used to how it's shaped you know the dimensions the size the thickness you know the radius and stuff like that and mm. and then yeah. this one and that's that's how this guitar came about <laughs> yeah um they're very similar. They're very similar guitars, actually. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I've had the pleasure of trying a lot of different specs of mm -hmm. that. But if you kind of look at the two guitars, they're very mm -hmm. similar. But um, this this has the Regis core shape. Yep. Instead of just the flat top that yep. the Regis has. It's kind of like... Um, yeah, this is called the Regis core. Essentially, it's... Mm -hmm. It's more carved out, so think of it as more kind of ergonomic. Curvy, yeah, curvy everywhere as well. And um, I don't know if you saw there, but um, it's got this big 
like crazy cutout. Oh yeah, there. Uh, yeah, it's 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 like really shaped and sanded. In it's really crazy. Like it. <laughs> does that come with come with the the standard Regis core as well? That yeah. Cut? Yes, that cut that comes with the standard Regis core, um, and being an actor, mm -hmm. obviously the guitar is already very, very playable. Yeah. So, um, oh god, I can't, I can't play right now, but <laughs> like yeah. you can. Yeah, I got the idea. You got the but, idea. <laughs> yeah. So what, like, did you did you ever, like, compare this with the Duvel before? I mean, because obviously for some people, they ar argue that, you know, I mean, personally, I, I, I would argue that the Duvel's, like, slightly more metal looking because it's slightly a bit more pointy. But then yeah. obviously it's not a uh, neck through like this one. It's always yeah. a bolt on. Yeah. So, so like um i actually do have a drill and i've played a lot of them but um i think there's uh i think we can all agree that bolt bolt on guitars especially for like metal music mm -hmm. they have a very distinct snap to it yeah yeah like it's um almost almost something i don't like necessarily mm -hmm. all of the time mm -hmm. um and I find that with Mayo, with the Devels, um, obviously, like you said, it is more of that metal kind of uh, take on a, mm -hmm. on, a, on a super strap. And that was, um, you know, I got one and I was, I was like, okay, yeah, cool. But um, like you said, you know what's good and you know what you like and you know what's familiar. Mm -hmm. So I came back to the Regius, but... Um, that's that's honestly it. Like there's you know my friend Brown, John Brown obviously has mm -hmm. a has a line of guitars with them and he loves he loves the uh, Yeah. That his man is Caesar all yeah. his are all Duvels as well. That man that man is <laughs> it's funny, the other day he, he messaged me out of nowhere um, and he's like, Fuck Ryan They can they're not they're not making the Charlahana's bridge anymore. Oh damn. I'm so fucking pissed off. <laughs> but um <laughs> that's something I also wanted to get into about regarding like, you know, the Devels. Um uh -huh. but you know, I don't know if you've played the sh the Charla. I haven't tried that personally before. actually. But it's, also, tried. it's also got this like clickiness. Oh really? Clickiness to the bridge. Which Brown really likes. Uh -huh. But um it's it's not necessarily something that's for me. I th I find that when you kind of put a, a like a Hannah's even even a hip shot, um, with, just with the the words like the wenge and the mahogany, it just it adds a lot of mid range and kind of richness mm -hmm. to it. Yeah, to the, I get what you mean. To the, to the snappiness, um, and sometimes that doesn't necessarily work for me. But um, for other people, they, they love it. Like, it's, you know, th that yeah. attack. Um, yeah. But honestly, I've I've had the, the Hannah's bridge on these, and I've had the hip shot bridge, and I've had uh, 50, 50 people ask me on Instagram, <laughs> why this bridge? Uh -huh. Why not the Hannah's? So there's your answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, All right. But, yeah, I think. This is something really unique about the way the Regis is constructed, um, especially with the neck through, which is just marvelous in itself. Yeah, it is. Um, Eleven pieces of wood. I don't know. I don't know how they do it. Yeah, it's but, crazy, uh, isn't it? Like when you look at it, it's, yeah. it's a bit crazy. <laughs> there, it's like, oh damn. I mean, it's. I mean, apart from the shape, it's also that you know, work of art of, you know, um, joining those piece of, pieces of wood together in right. such a fine manner uh, that I know, I think contributes to the, the value of the guitar as well. You know, when I, you look at that, you, you you can tell, you know, the amount of work that actually went into the yeah. guitar itself. And it's not just one that is just C and C and, you know, that's it. You know, there was actually manual labor, labor involved. It's like, it goes back to that kind of played in, played in guitar feel um, mm -hmm. we were talking about before, but I think with guitars, there needs to be a level of CNC involved, obviously, 
for yeah. the, you know just to get things overall shape yeah the ballpark ballpark yeah. movements and um but i can tell you like these guys on qc they're crazy they pluck these things like three times <laughs> over like they it's like if it leaves qc it's not going to have an issue yeah I, I can i can say that for every main s like i truly genuinely believe that yeah because yeah. <laughs> I, I just haven't played a shitty one <laughs> yeah actually that's kind of true i think i'm kind of happy with the two i have i mean i don't have them with me right now yeah. um but then like um I've got the Duvel 7 and Elite, um, and ah. but I but personally I kind of like I kind of dig the 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 non Elite a bit better because I think for some reason the Elite had has like a thicker neck um, for some reason I don't I don't know why um, so in terms of look I kind of like how the Elite looks but then in terms of the feel I kind of like. Um, the non-elite version, but both of them sound yeah. pretty much the same. Um, I, because, yeah. um, the the non-elite model has a maple neck, right? Yeah, yeah, it has a maple neck. I think I think I would like that more. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's I don't know. Looks wise, it's not as pretty as the Wenge yeah. one, but then in terms of the feel, um, that actually feels much better than. Um, the Wenge version and the Purple Heart. Um, so, yeah. so yeah. I, I, I always think, and I'm like, hmm, maybe if I spec a Devel out differently, say with um, an Ash Body uh -huh. and a Maple Neck, maybe that would fit me. But uh, I, th I think I'm at the stage where, I've, obviously, yeah. I have, I, ha I have what I want, and yeah. um, it does what it does, and it does what it does very well. <laughs> <laughs> that's good that's good well it, I, it's awesome to you know be involved with a company who just has so many options like you yeah. just uh, you just named like two variants of a single model but yeah it's great they're awesome that's, that's cool and and i think that that guitar like suits you really well and i think one thing i i like about that guitar even though it's designed for you um I think even fans who are not uh, necessarily um, not, not, not with no disrespect, and maybe the fans who don't exactly know who Ryan Sue or Polaris are, yeah. they would actually dig this guitar. And I think that's fairly important when it comes to, you know, launching a product because obviously you want to be able to reach people who aren't your fans as well. Yeah. And I think um, that, yeah, that matters a lot. I think from the very like from the word go we didn't want to plaster my name all over the guitar mm -hmm. or anything. first of all i don't think that looks good <laughs> like <laughs> like we don't i don't know for example if we had like a big fucking polaris logo here yeah. like, that would just look ugly to me <laughs> <laughs> um i'm very much as far as taste-wise, um, kind of minimal with this stuff. Like, I don't... I just want to design a nice guitar that everyone likes. Yeah, <laughs> and, that's true. Uh, and that's... That doesn't have my name plastered all over it um, because I think that's weird. Yeah. And um, exactly what you said. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's that's kind of like the direction that a lot of people are go heading towards as well. I mean, like for example, PRS. I mean, that's that's. I think now people are starting to see the importance in having their signature or their names either at the back, uh, yeah. you know, where you know where there's the bolt-on plate, or at the truss rod cover. So so yeah. then there's always that option to remove, um, you know, um, if you know they don't like it. So we have this little RFI7 there. It actually says RF7i. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the prototype? The prototype, so the, ba <laughs> the base plate's wrong. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's here for people nice. Nice. to know. Is that. yours the baritone version? Uh, the seven string, yeah, the seven string. I'm um, exclusively twenty six and a half. I see. As, as of now, yeah. 
Yeah, and so and this for the standard model, is, is it like the non-baritone or is the baritone the standard model for well, the standard? Well, here's the thing. So obviously the guitar was inspired uh -huh. by this first guitar. Um, so we can give you the option to kind of have little changes here and there, uh -huh. um, such as scale length uh -huh. um, and like such as uh, the pickup choice even yep. and the grade of top mm -hmm. wood. Because okay. this um, this is a master grade top. Mm -hmm. I think it's very, it's like really old. <laughs> um, and I also know that not necessarily everyone can be in the price range to have a master grade called the top. Yeah. Giving you the option of choosing from 3A to 5A so mm -hmm. to whatever. Um, but yeah. I think the seven string comes standard with uh, in baritone because that's what I play. But there is the option of having a twenty five and a half. Yeah. In yeah. Or twenty five and four. Four. Oh. Four. <laughs> For Mayo's case. Good correction. Yeah. Good yeah. correction. Yeah. You know why they do that? I've got no idea. Like enlighten me, please. <laughs> Because then I'm like, okay, so P so Gibson has 24.75, PRS is 25, 25 yeah. Fender's 25.5, Mana's yeah. 25.44. <laughs> <laughs> That's the exact reason. Man, That's this awesome. is crazy. <laughs> That's the reason. I, just because they can. Yeah. <laughs> just because they can. Uh, uh, however, I do kind of find that a bit annoying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because like uh, I th I do think um you know uh, the twenty five and a half or twenty six or seven does help a lot um with yeah keeping you know at least the bottom string in yeah. tune and I think you know it's for me the general rule of thumb is for a seven string to at least be you know. 26 you know, or at least 25 and a half and or yeah. ideally 26 and above you know uh, so yeah. to, to to make sure that your strings are not like bass strings and but at the same time have enough ten tension that's, that's the thing it, for me it's always been kind of juggling between a thicker string gauge or a longer neck mm. and being the very very indecisive person i am <laughs> I've always jumped back and forth, mm -hmm. um, but obviously being a six string player first mm -hmm. and this guitar here that I keep talking about, mm -hmm. that first guitar being 20, standard, standard scale, let's call mm -hmm. it standard scale. Yeah. Um, some, sometimes I kind of miss that slinkiness mm -hmm. and sometimes I actually, <laughs> like live, I remember there was this, we have this song called Landmine. Mm -hmm. There's a solo in it, and usually, uh -huh. I, usually I can just go for a bend and I'll hit it sweet. Uh -huh. But um, I've, I've realized playing this guitar live, I <laughs> bend really it, bend it, bend, bend a little further. So like, there's this YouTube video of us playing that song live. Uh -huh. I'm, just, I'm just going for this bend, and I'm just like so off. <laughs> it's like. I'm just, kind of I'm just not getting there. I'm just like, oh, whatever. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a compromise, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't... I don't really miss anything as as far as a seven-string goes. I don't think I'm missing out. Because mm -hmm. um, I'm using 10 to 52 uh -huh. for, uh, for the first six strings. Mm -hmm. And this is a 70 here, oh, okay. um, which is probably the th too thick. I don't know. Yeah, it's just slightly on the thick side for the 70. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just See, slightly. I'm, still, I'm still kind of undecided. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess like uh, it's it's just a matter of you know um, testing it out and then. Uh, balancing between how it plays, how it feels, and how it sounds, because I yeah. guess you know the thicker you go, then. But obviously, I think it may not be like um, a big problem for you, especially you know when you say you're not exactly a, a fan of the, that 
that extreme snappiness. So yeah. yeah, so having thicker strings does actually give you a bit more of the sound that you're looking for, Indeed. I presume. Indeed. So that's where we're at currently. I think it's a nice middle ground. Yeah, nice. It's still got the, you yeah. know, but it. Did you ever consider like, you know, doing like a multi, multi scale kind of um, guitar or did you, were you always, you know, uh, you know, never, ever considered that at all? Never, never considered it, to be honest. Really? Um, man, like I've, I've played multi scales, obviously. I, my bass player, um, used jingles. Yeah. Like, like like every bass player in the world, um, <laughs> but I think for guitar it's a bit of a different approach with multi scale because for me it's all about the relationship between the like the distance between the pickup and the bridge mm -hmm. to me mm -hmm. matters a lot. Like uh, I don't know, you'll see you'll see like I've played a lot of Strandbergs mm -hmm. where like say the bass pickup won't be aligned perfectly yeah. and therefore it cre creates um une uneven spacing yeah. with each of the strings yeah. each of the strings respectively um it's kind of just the, to the the tonality of it has kind of thrown me off mm -hmm. but at the same time i think i i don't think i've given it the chance mm -hmm. Like, but, but like I said, I'm stuck in my ways. Guitarists, guitarists can be stubborn, <laughs> and I'm being stubborn. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I find that it definitely affects the tone, especially with how you actually place your... Um, yeah, I was about to say the same thing, yeah. actually. I think, I mean, obviously having a multi-scale gives you the advantage of like a tighter bottom end, and then like you have like that slinky top. And then what I find with mine is that... Um, I'm having an extremely tough time figuring out where I should place my palm. Exactly. And it's yeah. so, so difficult. And every string is different. Um, so yeah, that's, that's exactly what, what I was trying to explain. Yeah, you know? it's, it's so difficult. Um, for me, it just creates more variables that don't need to be there. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. For me, it's, oh man, I sound so old, but you know, Keep it simple. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, that's true. Keep, keep things simple. Like it's it's the same with how I approach guitars. It's the same with how I approach my tones. Um, you know, I think yeah, maybe I'm just really stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just let's uh, let's just put it in a more positive way. You you have you know like, you more or less know what you want. Yes, <laughs> I know. Not I know. Exactly what I want. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's that's like a nicer way of putting it. Oh, also, okay. then speaking of like design, the design of the guitar. Can you like walk us through the process of uh, you know the RS? I mean, before we even go to the specs, you know how how did you yeah. know this whole process start? Like you know, did you hit up Mayo and say like, oh, I I think this is the time that you know we should be doing a signature model, or did they approach you, or you know, just briefly summarize? Mm -hmm. Um, the idea actually, yeah, geez, it's been so long. See, you don't really think about these things when you like, I guess, like from the very inception of the idea to now, it's probably been close to two years, mm -hmm. which is like, I didn't even have my first album out two years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's kind of insane. But um, it also shows you how far you kind of have to play it and things back and how much you have to back and forth with the guys. Mm -hmm. But I think to answer your question, it was just the natural progression. It was the next thing for us to do. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? I think I was, I was re-signing my third contract with them and it was just like, hey, it's been it's like close. It's been a long time. Should, um, should we do something together? Yeah, like cough, cough. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's because I was getting a lot of dealers as well. Um, 
a lot of dealers in my in my inbox, and they wanted to know the specs for this guitar. Mm -hmm. Um, because it's so, I guess, recognized. <laughs> um, I mean, like, um, amongst people, who are fans, fans, yeah, yeah, who are fans, kind of maybe associate this finish mm -hmm. with myself. So that's. That's where the inspiration came from because I was getting all these guitars from them. They're all there, <laughs> um, and I was trying out all I was trying out all the, all this different stuff, and I just kept coming back to this guitar. I just kept coming back to this one, and I don't know why. Actually, I know I do know why because it's perfect. <laughs> um, but you know, there was a lot of fucking around on my part, like. <laughs> with specs and just trying things like going as deep with the with the Hannah's bridge trying the Hannah's on a on a Regius mm -hmm. you know putting out a, a Wenge neck instead of a maple not roasting the maple roasting the maple <laughs> I guess we kind of got straight into specs there but it kind of does lead into the, the story of the guitar yeah I mean, go like, ahead go ahead you, you search so long to try and find your tone just to end up where you started. Actually, that's kind of true. Right. It's just the same with picks sometimes, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Like you try this and then you think, yeah, fuck no, it's not for me. And then, and then, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that says, well. yeah, I know, right? <laughs> you, you buy so much bullshit just to use a 5150. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In the end, you realize that true love was right in front of you. Exactly. So that's why like, I didn't want to fuck around with... I wanted to... Okay, that guitar is like seven years old now. Uh -huh. So I essentially just wanted to pimp it up. <laughs> I just wanted well, to... Well, you pimped it up real good. Pimped it up real good. And um, I sure did. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. The... So, yeah. I just I just took the best things out of all the guitars they've made for me and I threw it into this. And so I would I would think then a lot you know like the wood that was used was you know like the the, the ash that you're using it's also you know taken from the first the first guitar you had because it felt yes. great. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um I find that with um with ash especially that uh well how about this a lot of a lot of wood species i find um vary a lot in weight mm -hmm. they vary a lot in density as well mm -hmm. um even even if it's within the same species and i kind of i mean i've i've done the whole tone wood mm -hmm. the whole tone wood thing i've done i've done all that i've, mm -hmm. I've done the research uh, i don't know but um what was I going? Okay, different species. You know how people would associate, like, let's say, ash with maybe a brighter mm -hmm. sound, or like mahogany with a rich, with, yeah, with a with a deeper, fatter sound. These are all just nice little words, <laughs> but um, there's just there's just too much going on, like within a tree to like say okay i like mahogany mm -hmm. because it comes from so many different places yeah like okay i'm set on, i'm set on this this type of wood but um that's the thing so many so many places just sort uh source their woods from different parts of the planet mm -hmm. like, yeah and that can end up you can end up having pieces of mahogany that are so heavy uh, or like you'll have lighter pieces of mahogany um yeah. so on and so forth yeah. and that's something through the process of playing their guitar that's something i discovered myself and just playing guitar in general um i like i like a lightweight body mm -hmm. and there was too much ebb and flow going on with the mahogany that we're forcing at the time mm -hmm. so in my opinion swamp ash is very consistent mm -hmm. Um, in, in terms of weight and you know yeah. density and stuff. Yeah, exactly. So that was a huge factor, to be honest. Um, yeah. But beyond that, beyond the ash, I think roasting it, mm -hmm. 
interesting. It did some good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it kind of makes it a bit a bit more special there. I mean, it is yeah. a good wood on its own, and then roasting it. So, I mean, yeah. that's just making it better without yeah. a doubt. And and I think you made a very good point there in terms of you know wood um, density and weight consistency because obviously sometimes like you said like when it comes to woods like mahogany. You know, sometimes, especially when they come in solid finishes, and then they say it's mahogany, and then you're like, "Are you sure this is mahogany?" And then, yeah, so I think it makes a lot of sense that you know certain species does have, you know, it it still varies, but then you know the percentage varies is not that noticeable compared to certain um, species species like, for example, maple and things like yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I I used to be overly overly specific about these things mm -hmm. like, if you get, get me a piece of wood that weighs this much <laughs> so i'd have them like choose out stuff in a wood wood shop for me but uh honestly going with maple and ash it's just consistent mm -hmm. and uh you know roasting it is is like the little, <laughs> the, yeah. the, the, the little glazing on the turkey you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. That's true. Yeah, and and I think that's the trend now. It is the trend, but there is also a very um um. There's a good reason for it, obviously. You know, when when guitar companies get wood stock in, mm -hmm. they usually buy their wood dried, mm. ready, kiln drying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm not gonna. I'm not an expert on this by any means, but um. <laughs> Obviously, they get the wood in and they they dry the woods again because um, they just need to get everything to a certain consistency within yeah. each other. What the roasting does is it kind of does that process, but like times two. Mm -hmm. um, as you can see, it almost completely removes the moisture out of the out of the wood. Yeah. And it leaves just enough moisture in there to make sure that it doesn't crack. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. These these are all very very fine little templates. Yeah. Right? yeah. Somehow they've just engineered this guitar to work because, yeah. like you said, if you take too much out, it's it's going to be too brittle, right? Yeah. And yeah. ash ashes are very light, and yeah. brittle, brittle. Yeah, so if it dries up, then that that's it, you know. So this is like <laughs> I'm doing. I'm doing this. Yeah, you hear, it and and that's that's really true about you know really kiln drying, drying and roasting a piece of wood, and and it's that you know it really resonates when it's like yeah. dried properly, and um and you know a wet guitar, you know it just you know when you knock it, it literally mm -hmm. sucks sucks in the sound, yeah. and you can really yeah. tell the difference, can't you? You really can. That's why. I've been, that's why I've been quietly whacking on this. Not, not, uh, it's addictive, isn't it? Like, <laughs> yeah. For anyone who's wondering, I don't know. This guitar just has like, <laughs> oh, like it. It sounds so dumb and it looks so dumb, but it's got this like one kind of tonality to it, and the whole instrument just resonates in it in the exact way you want it to and it's just like oh yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice 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 yeah. well yeah so like speaking of of you know woods and specs like um I, I also wonder like you know because obviously this comes in like rsi 6 and rsi 7 so then was it hard to kind of determine you know what sort of radius you wanted you know on the neck and the thickness and everything like that or or was it like you know taken off the existing models because you liked what was there before very big question <laughs> yeah. um, i'm very picky and very um yeah i change my mind all the time <laughs> uh but this this guitar actually has the 16 inch radius mm -hmm. has 16 inch radius pretty yeah. I guess I think Ibanez is 17. Mm -hmm. So kind of playing around that ballpark, but having something feel more traditional. That's what I that's what I've also really liked about Manus. Like mm -hmm. as, as 
much as you can push the envelope of its design, it still feels traditional. Like, it feels like a classic instrument, and that. Yeah. And here yeah. I am again. I played it in classic guitar kind of feel. Yeah. It's, it's got it, and it's like I just I'm so flabbergasted by this guitar. Like <laughs> it's it's just amazing. I don't have many more words for it. It's just, <laughs> See, every every note on this guitar just resonates like crazy. Like even unplugged, maybe you can even hear it. Yeah, I can, I can. See, it's just as it's oh, just damn. out there. Like it's Yeah. Every note just snaps out, doesn't it? And you can hear it even with my headphones. And not even just that, you can feel it, like... <laughs> it's just a lovely and it sounds beautiful. Yeah, um, and, I, and I gotta agree with you, actually. I do, I do kind of agree that, you know, the 16 is kind of like the perfect balance between not having too much curve and, you know, versus yeah. like a very flat, you know, uh, fretboard radius. And some people hate it a lot, but then, like, I find that having that very, very ever so slight um, curve makes yeah. it so much nicer to play. Yeah, honestly, it helps. And um, it's funny you mentioned that because my live, the guitars I've been using live have 20 inch fretboards. <laughs> so they're like pretty much flat, flat, like classical so guitars. They're flat. So they're flat. Um, I don't know. See, I'm always jumping in between. But um, I think I think 16s, like you said, the perfect kind of sh like you get your shreddy kind of vibe, but you also it's not too shreddy. Yeah, like you, know, you get your chord. It, it feels right when you when you fret the chords as well. Exactly. So yeah. it's like I think it's like the sweet spot between chords and uh, shreddy stuff. But then then like because I have some of my guitars um like in storage, mm -hmm. so like. I'll be playing on 16 inch fretboards for a while and then I'll I'll grab out my uh my other Regis with the 20 inch I'm like, oh damn. This, <laughs> this is really fast. <laughs> so that's, well, that's, what I, that's what I like about the 20 inch radius. It's like it's it's quick. Like you know, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. I mean I guess like you said, 16 is kinda like neither extreme towards uh, either end it's just like the sweet spot between the yeah. different the two worlds isn't it see i was i was gonna actually push it to a 17. uh-huh why didn't you just i i this, <laughs> this thing. so is that a, that's a 16 or is that a 17. 16, yeah, it's a, it's a oh. 16. it's also yeah that first guitar i have so um I don't know if you remember, but I also have this R Ibanez RGA. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I've seen like a few covers of yours in that as well. It's actually over there. I currently have it set up in Drop C. Um, um, but that has a 17 inch radius. So I kind of, yeah, grew up playing Ibanez's around the same fretboard kind of radius, you know? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, old old habits die hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I, and I think you know, like um, sixteen and seventeenth teen um, uh, radius doesn't really feel that different. I mean, we have to be very honest. I mean, I can, I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's bull. I guarantee that's bull. <laughs> you know. So yeah. So yeah, to be honest, uh, but uh, obviously with like, you know, a 17 and a 20, you actually feel the yeah. difference. Um, but between a 16 and 17, I think it, the tolerance, um, it's yeah. not, you don't really feel it that much. So it's it's still kind of cool, you know, I, either ways, you know. Um, yeah, so then in terms of like the, the wood for the for the neck, was it, I, I'm, I'm guessing it, it was like a clear and, you know, uh no brainer question for you to go for this for this wood wasn't it yeah <laughs> <laughs> or did you or was it one of those cases where you think you you should have went i mean you wanted to try a maple neck or 
Or was no. it like clear cut for you? It was clear cut. It was always, I mean, just look at the guitars I, I played. Maple next, maple next, maple next, maple next. Why fuck with it? it? You know, you know what it sounds like. It's like it's consistent. It's a great piece of wood. <laughs> it's a very, yeah. it's a fantastic species of wood that sounds very bright, which I love. Um, it was a no brainer, but um, something specific about this guitar. Um, I don't know if you've researched much into it, but when they do their laminate necks, mm -hmm. it's usually like a, a lot of different types of woods mm -hmm. together, mm -hmm. like six different species, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's what all my other guitars have, but with this, I only wanted to do Wenge, okay, Wenge and uh, and, oh. and Maple. yeah. Um, I think that was like a decision on their part as well. And is there a specific reason for that? Um, I'm not sure, but uh, I figured the less species, like the, the less amount of woods you have to put together a neck, um, the more universal the instrument will sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That, it does, that, that's that does kind of make sense, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was just a little theory. I wanted to try out because I've always been like, oh, damn, like you have these crazy necks with all these pieces of wood on it. What if you only, what if you just changed it to two strains? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you can get this, and I think it's a, it's an ex ex experiment that went very well. Um, <laughs> that, well that, that, that's all that matters. Isn't yeah. It? Yeah. Um, and that, that, that was also with the roasting because I had never had a roasted neck from them before. Mm -hmm. But what I find is uh, the roasting process just adds a lot of brightness. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's uh, obviously due to the weight, but yeah. um, also, aside from this being completely neck through, um, it's also got this ridiculously thick <laughs> maple cap on it. I don't know if you can see, but like, oh, you mean the top? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's very it's thick. It's like half an inch or something like that. Yeah, it's it's a huge. No, actually, no. Wow. Probably, I'd say they'd probably have to cut it down from like one and a half inches or anything to start the carving process. Just to get the curve right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, that's another thing about this guitar. This maple top is so damn thick. It just sounds amazing. Maple's just a very good sounding word. I'm, I'm sure everyone can agree with me. The, yeah. Like like your Gibson purists back yeah. in the day. Yeah. You know, very, very big maple top, but very heavy, right? Yeah. But um, they've, man they've managed to make just like the perfectly weighted guitar, guitar for me because... You know, when you spec these out onto a water form, it's just numbers and and parts, right? Yeah. You don't know you don't know if you're actually gonna like the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> so that was really scary. That was really scary for me because I'm like, what if I don't like this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's always the fear, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I first when I when let me pull out the six string just because. Yeah, just because. Alright. It's the same deal. But, um, yeah. This tinier, just a wee it's bit tinier. A little, little smaller. Yeah. Um, is there any difference on the body size, or is it exactly the same? There is difference. I don't. I don't know what the difference is, but yes, there is. Oh, <laughs> I, imagine, okay. I imagine it's uh, approximately one seventh bigger. <laughs> <laughs> well, huge difference there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this guitar has the same thing. The specs are entirely the same, mm -hmm. and man. It's just so even. It's just like, they really did nail these guitars. Because, like I said, it, it was a scary thing, you know, designing something, especially 
you know, when there's so much time involved and, you know, time is money, et cetera, et cetera. It's just like, let's, let's try and nail this on the first take. And we nailed it. Nice. Well, yeah, I guess, I guess that's always um, unknown until, you know, you actually get the guitar. And, yeah. you know, obviously not everyone gets the, has the kind of privilege where, you know, you get artists like John Petrucci, where he gets to try the prototype and if he doesn't like it, they change it yeah. again and then they change it again and again and again until he likes it. You know? it's, the process is not really like that with manners. But, yeah, this is your one chance. Make sure <laughs> you, do it, you do it right, you know. Yeah. yeah. But uh, obviously, you can tell as well because of amount, the amount of work that actually needs to go into, you know, actually making this into a complete product. And you can kind of understand why they can't afford to go back and forth, you know. Yeah, absolutely. But um, I think, yeah, I think we both knew that kind of going into it. But we also had a very, we had a good feeling about it. <laughs> yeah, that's important as well. Yeah, and I, and I gotta, I gotta give it to my, uh, my friend, my very good friend in artist relations at uh, Manus, uh, Mateus. If you see this, I love you. <laughs> well, let's 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 make sure he sees this then. <laughs> he kind of he kind of came into the company I think about four three years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and he just kind of completely changed the the artists, the AI. Yeah, it's just, um, and he kind of spearheaded this this guitar and really made it happen for me. Um, so I, I owe a lot to that guy, and um, he definitely knows what's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I, I think it helps because um, obviously, apart from. Um, you know, obviously making a good guitar, I mean, making it a good experience during the process, you know, matters a lot as well, because um, obviously that kind of affects your decision as well. And the proper advice, you know, sometimes, sometimes, you know, we want like, you know, a stone top, you know, a five inch thick stone top with like, a, you know, a marble fretboard, you know. <laughs> yeah, no. That's dumb. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, we, we kind of need people with, you know, pro- obviously experience and yeah. uh, to kind of advise that, you know, that's not the way to go. And it kind of pull us back at times when we get a bit too crazy. But obviously, you can, it's also important to feel that they are trying their best to kind of accommodate those requests, you know. And I, think, I think that's a great thing. I think that says a lot about the company, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I know, I know some custom shops that are willing to just make anything, like, <laughs> you know, like, put a dumb orange finish on this and put a swirl on the back and make this a walnut neck and I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are. But, and um, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, sorry, you were saying? Oh, no, you're gone. <laughs> no, I was saying, like, so So I would presume, like, they pretty much nailed um, every single detail the way you wanted it, wanted it and the way it was specced. Yeah. yeah, because I've got to know from, you know, I won't say who and I won't say who, which company, um, someone who's pretty big as well. And then it was like, oh, he has, like, two US, U.S. custom shops, like, from this very well-known company. And then they were like, I was like, oh, why is that like that? And then he was like, yeah, they got it wrong. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, so it kind of sucks, sucks to be in it, in that position. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I guess let's kind of talk about that. Um, the relationship is so important. And not, not just because of the process, just, I mean, like, I think this process was so easy because we've been working together already mm-hmm. for like close to six, seven years. Mm-hmm. If we didn't have that, like if we if we didn't if we had to start from scratch, I think we'd be we'd be at a very different point. Mm. But like you said, you know, it's just the ethos of the of the company is great. Like they know what they're doing. They mm-hmm. made me consistent guitars for 
X amount of years. So, so I know I know what I'm getting. So, yeah. So it's certainly, yeah. of course. But, uh, yeah, I kind of forgot forgot where we're going, but um. <laughs> <laughs> Lost your train of thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah but it's yeah. cool. It's cool. Yeah, but I think it's kind of true. I mean, you can tell by you know, there's episode where gear gods uh they were doing like a factory tour and then like brown was just in the background doing stuff and, oh, um, yeah so that, so that was kind of funny as well and um yeah. but you can tell i mean that that joke aside you can tell that you know mayonnaise actually they do really take pride in you know um every department of you know that factory there you know down to you know the part where they keep the room where they keep their woods and you know where all the master grades are kept um you know so there's like that sense of pride there so and i think that it's so it's amazing that you know all that proud pride is also reflected in you know the final product and it's not like they have like this amazing warehouse amazing workshop but then they make shitty guitars yeah no it's not just that i think a lot of people don't know they're a family-run company. Mm, wow. And this wow. still family-run. Um, damn, I can't. I believe they started in the '80s. It's been close to what thirty over thirty-five years they've been together. Um, mm -hmm. And the, and they started as a company because um, obviously people were trying to import guitars into Europe, and you mm -hmm. know. They, they were too expensive so you know they saw they saw a opportunity at the time obviously this is way before i was even <laughs> conceived um, <laughs> even the, before the process <laughs> that's like the ethos of the company they just started making their own guitars in poland <laughs> and then suddenly like obviously word of mouth and you know they're a very big company throughout Europe now, but even seven years ago, they weren't like the biggest company in the world, mm -hmm. and I, I still don't think they are. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I think the fact that they're still family run is really great, is really amazing. I, I think the fact that they keep their circle very small. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone who works with each other, they either like know each other from playing music together or like you know it's oh. it's, some, it's some branch of that but it very much so is like a family vibe even though they don't go out of their way like pushing that you know oh we're we're a family owned company yeah. so, uh, still after this many years um well, that's all reflected in the final products isn't it exactly i mean that's that one of the first things i said i when we started talking, if if a guitar leaves QC mm -hmm. from from headquarters from Manus, I I have every belief it's mm -hmm. the perfect guitar. Like, yeah, and I certainly agree. And like you said, I don't think there's one that you know um, makes you. I mean, I've never seen one or even played one that made you go like, ugh. You know, you get what yeah. I mean. Even yeah. the finish, the finish itself, you know, it's always pristine, like you know, like like godlike level kind of pristine. You know, uh, when when you see them being laid out in stores, you, you look at them and you're like, damn. And then in some ways, you kind of see that you know a lot uh, of you know what you pay for goes to that you know level of detail i mean you know what you're paying for you know i mean it's it's not cheap it's not cheap without a doubt but then you do kind of understand why it's priced that way as well yeah yeah i mean that's a that's a very big point too like the price point of this instrument like um you know i was very adamant on making a guitar that was the exact same thing i would use mm -hmm. You know, that's something I've, that's, a, that's something in general that I think I should be doing just, you know, as a reflection upon myself and as a reflection of the guitar, like, you know, if I wasn't playing the exact thing, you know, like what's, you know, what's the big deal about this guitar then, you know, mm -hmm. if it's, yeah, I just wanted it specked out, you know, exactly like how I want them. 
And um, yeah, like you said, if you if you get the chance to come to any one of our shows or anything, come bother me. I I always love talking about guitars. Seriously. Nice. <laughs> if anyone sees me running around or something, just talk about guitars. I'm talking about guitars. Come, <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm such a huge advocate for this company. It's like I don't, I don't mind if you play this. In fact, it gives me joy to see a fan come up after a show. You know, the smaller kind of shows, yeah. of course. That doesn't happen as much anymore as we've kind of just skyrocketed up. Yeah. Um, which is fantastic. But um You do miss that that tight interaction. Yeah, yeah. But we still get that in Europe. Nice. Like in Europe and other other like rural countries. So rural uh cities in Australia. So um like come yeah, come come bother me come bug me after a show come bug me before a show Can i'll you... try it and then like the first thing i'll do is like knock knock yeah. knock 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 <laughs> <in the front. laughs> keep knocking Sorry. it's very i'm i don't know towards the end of our last year being to i just started throwing my guitar out <laughs> i'm not even like because i'm stupid and i <laughs> you know you do dumb things on stage no. when you're a few beers in <laughs> <laughs> what happened then though like did they, did well, they... like it was it wasn't like a huge venue so i just threw it out and then i started pack yeah. <laughs> threw it into the crowd <laughs> i've actually i've done this multiple times but th there was this was this one time where i was like okay fuck i think i need to go find my guitar <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was oh well fun. when the adrenaline kicks in we all do silly yeah. stuff don't we but um yeah. but all i'm trying to say is don't feel afraid to come up to me if you ever see me because i can talk about these guitars forever <laughs> <laughs> i can tell in fact how tell. long has it been it's been it's an hour and six it's minutes over an hour <laughs> and yours was supposed to be like you know the short the short uh kind of sort of interview i mean like i was telling you before this i was yeah yours is going to be short because we're only going to talk about your guitar and then i i didn't expect this to like you know but, but, but it's kind of good because i think that's kind of like the whole point of this anyway because like um because you've given your sort of personal thoughts on what you really feel about the guitar and it's not just like oh, i have like jumbo fret stainless steel and so it's yeah. like it's so i think that's kind of like what you get off you know specifications but then i mean when you invest in like especially in the signature model you do want to know what you know the artist's um thought process behind and the decisions made and why and you know and you know and everything else that the artist actually genuinely things about the guitar and i think that really helps right. one decide it's the story yeah it is absolutely it's all about that you know yeah so like to wrap things up about specs like so was there like a specific sound you were looking for when when you when you picked like the pickups um you know and like the wood and things like that was there like a very defined sound that you were after um yeah, I guess you could say say so. Um, maple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean maple. Honestly, sometimes I think with neck through guitars, the wings don't even matter that much mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the pickups the are top. the pickups and the neck. Think about it; it's direct. It's it's direct mounted to this yeah. giant. That's, that's kind of true giant long piece of yeah. Yeah. and something yeah. about that combination i think you'll hear john petrucci talking about his majesties yeah in the same way but yeah. this this one kind of piece almost construction mm -hmm. is you know the basic thing i was going for you know because i think the construction inherent inherently just has this rich lovely beautiful sound to it but when you're using bright spanky woods like mahogany it can also you know get really 
get really aggro mm -hmm. and angry, an angry sound. Okay. Um, I think I think rounding up the specs, we should talk about pickups. Yeah. That was a bit of an adventure in itself. <laughs> <laughs> it still is. It still is. Um, but um, I, I gotta. I can't talk about this guitar without talking about Benacle pickups. Yeah. Um, and Tim Mills. Tim Mills is uh, absolute gentleman. Is the CEO of Bare Knuckle Pickups. Mm -hmm. um, just a good friend of mine, and an, I'd say a, a mentor. Mm -hmm. um, but we had the, you know, we were designing this guitar and obviously talking about the pickups as well. Like, what do we want to throw in here? And it's just like, oh, geez. <laughs> what, do we, what do we want to put in here? And um, so they were actually working on a collaboration, um, the two companies by themselves, and they put out a pickup called the TKO. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, did you hear about that? Yeah, so yeah. now the new Mayos do actually come with the TKOs already. They all, they all come to stock with the TKOs. And they're great pickups. They're really awesome. It's um if I if I were to kind of boil it down, it's kind of just like a na a, a nail bomb. Like a, a nail bomb that's more like rich in the mids. It has more of a big push. Mm -hmm. Uh more bloom, uh, a bit juicier, um, but they, they were based off the nail bomb and the VH2, the TKO, mm -hmm. because um, there's, there's something about this set which I love and Mateus loves as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we, we we always talk about these, these two pickups and at the time, you know, the TKOs are being designed and like, Rubia had just put out the silos yeah. and you know there's all these pickups and I was just like oh the choices you have to make the choices <laughs> but um yeah that that was like a that, that's still a journey that's currently going mm -hmm. um but I guess that's just guitar yeah and like to be to be to be honest like I mean the pickups aren't like the the worst things ever if you ever want to change them you know i mean it's it's so convenient to just swap them out to to kind of test to see if you like something else better um so i mean it's very different from you know the construction of you know the the guitar itself and the type of wood because those are kind of things that you can't change you know and yeah. but when it comes to pickups it's not as intimidating in a sense that you know if you don't really like it you know you can always you know, swap yeah. them out. You know. For example, um, like that Duvel, mm -hmm. I have, um, it just, it had juggernauts in there. Oh, so nice. Very mid forward pickups. Mm -hmm. Very, very mid, very mid focus. Um, and between that and the, the mahogany and the neck uh, bolt on and the wenge, it was just too much attack for me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with those pickups especially but um i put in a set of fishman fluences mm -hmm. um moderns mm -hmm. shout, out, uh, shout out to ken ken Susie. um and they just work really well for that guitar oh nice nice sometimes yeah. sometimes a pickup change is all all you need to kind of bring out a new life to a guitar yeah exactly I mean, especially when you have like, you know, brands like, you know, um, Fishman's when, I mean, because the technology is kind of like completely different. They went in a different direction yeah. uh, when it came to the technology. And um, I'm actually kind of torn in between whether I should go for, you know, the um, Mark Holcomb's 8 um, or, yeah. you know, the, the Fluence. But then obviously the Fluence kind of has that edge there because it's supposed to be um, equal sounding throughout, mm -hmm. you know, and obviously when you split the calls, it retains its volume and not drop. So it kind of has like a slight edge there, but you know, I know, I know what kind of tall. But um, I think the moderns are great at what they do. I love those pickups. Mm -hmm. Honestly, they're really good. 
really, really good pickups. But um, this, this like, I mean, it just comes back down to what you know. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean? when I plug into some Fishmans, they feel like active pickups, mm-hmm. and they are active. They pickups. are. They are. They are. They are. Mm-hmm. They just don't want to market it that way. <laughs> it's totally fine. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, I've, I've had lots of conversations with Josh from Architect and, and Martin, mm-hmm. uh, Guitar Tech. But um, sometimes there's a certain level of, like, elitism mm-hmm. with pickups. You know what I mean? Oh, passive pickups are going to sound so much better because... The more natural, dynamic, and and dynamic. Yeah. But um, we we have conversations about this all the time. But uh, because Josh is a huge uh, fisherman advocate, and so is Martin. Um, so they're they're always like, whenever we play shows together, they're always chucking shit at me, <laughs> <laughs> vice versa. But um, Ad- Adam Adam is is team bare knuckle. So mm. right. nice. Well. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, it's. I mean, I think what matters the most with the pickups is that they have to, like the guitar itself, it has to inspire. So, I mean, we're not taking away the fact that you know all these are great, amazing pickups, um, mm-hmm. but it it just comes down to you know which one inspires you the most personally. Yeah. I think that matters the most. It's the inspiration part, and um, yeah. It's what you know, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah they're not cool pickups, man, that's guitars. I mean, like, I haven't used anything else. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, you went you went for top top drawer kind of stuff straight away. <laughs> privileged. <laughs> very, very privileged. Yeah. Very, very, very thankful. Very grateful for, like, for Ben Uckle supporting me at at the very young age um, that I did, and uh, as well with Manus, because um, you know, I, I say this a lot in interviews and you know in podcasts a lot, but like I'm I'm only 23 now, mm-hmm. so imagine imagine how young I would have been back back in the day when we first started working together. Um, the reason I'm so loyal to these guys and these companies is not only because I love what they do is it's because they took a huge risk on a on a fifteen year old kid on the internet. Because that's that's all I was. Like I didn't I didn't have a career. Mm-hmm. It was it was purely YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, and I will I will always thank you know, I'll forever be in their debt for just kind of backing me and seeing the potential that they saw um, even just just from the goddamn internet. Um, and I seriously can't thank these two companies enough for just letting me do my thing. Letting because there's never we've never but there's never been a point where it's like you know a, a change of kind of ideals or we're button heads or anything like that. It's always cool. It's always like like. Like, say if I wanted to buy a Stratocaster, mm-hmm. because manners don't make a Stratocaster. Yeah. I'm like, hey, can I buy a Strat, guys? That's fine. Maybe. <laughs> we don't make Stratocasters. <laughs> but, but, but that, like, they wouldn't let me do that unless, you know, we had such a long working relationship together. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's it's, true. It's trust and it's all T. And, yeah. uh, Nothing more else I can say other than yeah, very very grateful. Yeah, and I think I think that's kind of in some ways you gotta agree that that was kind of key to you, you know, really pushing forward and really grinding forward as well. You know, knowing that you've got that kind of support um, yeah. gives you the extra drive to kind of push forward. And then you know, we can kind of say that there might be a chance that if without that support things might have you you might have actually chosen a different path you know career wise you know i mean i'm not saying it's a must but there's a chance you know without all that support you might have taken a different uh, direction altogether uh you're absolutely right yeah because man i think when we when i first got in touch with these companies it was around the same time <coughs> excuse me <Yeah. coughs> 
<clears throat> but yeah, I, I was going through high school. I was going through fucking puberty. <laughs> <laughs> to, to, yeah, to, to put it subtly. <laughs> But you know, you know what I'm saying, and I I know what you're saying, and exactly like I could have ended up in a very different spot, you know. Yeah. But luckily, everything for me has just kind of I don't know. It's almost like someone's taken the driving wheel. It, even it, even though you know we've worked so hard, and I've worked so hard perfectly. Sorry. Yeah, I've worked so hard on my performance. That's what I meant to say as a guitarist myself. Oh my god, I just lost my train of thought again. <laughs> Wherever that was going, I'm sure it was going to some inspirational uh, quote. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. It happens to all of us. But um, stay in school. <laughs> stay in school. I'm pretty sure that that was not where you wanted to go, but yeah, we'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Hey, cool. Don't do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm quite sure that was what you were you were building up towards yeah. earlier. I I kind of saw that coming actually. Stay, stay in school, don't do drugs, and be nice to your family. <laughs> yeah. Family is everything, and be nice to the people around you because. Oh, nice. Well, now that now that you're at this advice stage, you know, like, you know, um, you know, usually when we conclude our, our chats, you know, we usually do this part where um, we try to get, you know, the artist advice for anyone who's aspiring to either follow the same footsteps or aspiring to be a guitarist or musician. What sort of advice would you be able to, you know, give out as a established musician yourself? It's a very big question. It's either, um, Stay in school, don't do drugs. Okay, I mean... I, <laughs> yeah, again, I, honestly... Straightforward. If you're not in this 100%, it's never going to work out. If, if it's not absolutely what you want to do, and you may not even know that yet, um... But, you know, when I first started touring, I didn't know if it was something I could even cope with. You know, being a very anxious person um, and having all these, you know, obviously, like, we, we've been talking about age a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, I was at this point where I had to kind of make a lot of big decisions, right? And I wasn't even necessarily sure I was making the right decisions at the time. So let's go back a few years. Uh, I think I was, I graduated high school. Um, I did pretty well in high school, but um, I always wanted to be a musician, but I never knew what it took to perform and play. You know what I mean? That side is completely different. And when you have a lot of, these things going on in your head like say for example university at the time you know i wanted to go study jazz or whatever mm -hmm. but i dropped out five weeks in to go on tour <laughs> it's life is unexpected and like you know everything could change tomorrow. so if you want to do this do it and put everything you have into it because un unless you do that un like if you don't it's just not going to work out same same with finding like wide uh like-minded musicians you you have to kind of being in a band is something completely different to being an artist within yourself you learn a lot of things about yourself as a musician as well as a lot of new things you never thought you would ever know like um compromise is a big thing being in a band you know working with other creative minds mm -hmm. um so you have to take into account 
you know, all of these different things and, you know, not, not everyone is as privileged to, you know, I keep coming back to that word because, you know, I, I did have a very good hand in life with very supportive parents who mm-hmm. wanted to guide me and, you know, help me make the right decisions. But I think any, the big, biggest advice would just be to talk to people. Talk to your friends, talk to your mom, talk to your dad, like talk to your barber, talk to your hairdresser Mm -hmm. and just, just talk about life and just talk about, you know, what brought them to where they are today and think, you know, apply that to yourself Mm -hmm. and, and think to yourself, Hey, can I, can I make something out of, can I make my life music? Because that's what it is. Can I make this, you know, feasible? Can this be something that I can work on 100% of the time? You know, or is it going to be a side thing? You know, mm-hmm. but I think as it, it's it's a, it's a big undertaking in general. Just just to like even be open enough to want to share your creative art. Mm-hmm. So that in itself is is a big move. But I, I do understand the pressure that can come from, you know, if it's school, if it's your parents, if it's other things in life, maybe if, if it's your location. Mm-hmm. But all I have to say is you got to take all these things in, into account and you got to think about yourself and you got to think about your mental health and you got to think about the journey that's ahead. And I think about that every day too. You know, it's not just this, like, like we're talking, we're talking like I've cracked the code or something. <laughs> I haven't. I'm figuring things out every day. Every day I'm finding out new things about me. Um, I'm just, just listen to yourself. Listen to your body because it'll tell you a lot more than you think. Um, and yeah, stay in school. Don't do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> listen to your parents <laughs> it's a very long question and you can you can approach it from a, a lot of different ways yeah um, yeah but i think that's you know as, as solid as you know as advice can get to be honest I hope, I hope so because in the end i think everyone should yeah it's just about happiness and it's about knowing yourself and it's 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 about knowing if you can make a career out of this and if you can be happy doing it. You know what I mean? Sometimes you you know when I dropped out of university, and <laughs> I didn't even I didn't even tell my parents. <laughs> I, I I told them I deferred, but I just completely dropped out. And that, that was just eighteen year old Ryan being eighteen. But um, yeah, you may find yourself in a uni course, and you may find yourself not feeling very happy there, you know, studying. So, what I did wasn't necessarily the smartest thing. <laughs> but, um, but sometimes it has to be these moments. You know what I mean? These critical pinnacle moments in your life where you're like, "All right, I'm doing this. Yeah, I'm gonna drop out of uni to go and." a shitty five day tour <laughs> and there's gonna you know what i mean <laughs> that's probably a really stupid decision but um hey well, thankfully it worked out you know i think it's um it's it's uh, a, a huge blessing because you know it it yeah. might not necessarily work out the way uh yeah, you know it has like like it has for you and you know obviously that also came with all the hard work it's not just you know overnight success i mean i bet there were a lot of you know blood sweat and tears that went into you know building all that and to making sure that it became a proper career and not just you know a decision you made because yeah. you were drunk or high you know mm-hmm. but it's it's a decision you necessarily almost don't even have to make it should be so intrinsic within your personality it should be so built into who you are as a person it shouldn't even be a thought you know what i mean yeah 
and I, and I think it's I've I've always felt that way, but like I said, I've I'm I'm very lucky and privileged, um, very privileged and very lucky, and um, things worked out for me, and I, I understand a lot of people may not in be say in geographically even the right places of the world to even consider touring to be a viable thing mm -hmm. or you know because there's so much to account for you know there's money you know money money is the big thing you know yeah. how, how, do you, how do you go on tour and still kind of live yeah. that's something you'll have to figure out that's something i had to figure out that's something every musician has to figure out yeah. themselves but um if you're lucky enough you'll get to these stages where you can have like your eggs in different baskets so to speak yeah. um where and i'm talking about income here so like say you can teach on the road and instead of having a day job yeah if, if you're still kind of riding that fine line between approaching it professionally and mm -hmm. it's still kind of being you know taking off um think about, think about it that way but um yeah yeah, it's about spreading those eggs into like different baskets and then you know obviously over yeah. time that depending on you know um what comes back you kind of know um, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the, the idea gets a bit clearer you know you kind of know where more of your eggs should be you know yeah. in terms of which basket so and um, you know, you know that, that comes with you know fear yeah for example um, but that's just one of many examples, but you really do kind of have to be the modern, like almost an entrepreneur for yourself. Yeah. Like the modern, the modern musician is very much that, I think. Yeah. It's kind of, it's really different from how, how it was back then, to be honest. Yeah. I think that's because of a lot of things. Um, Technology and stuff. Yeah. How we, how we consume music yeah because everything's just a stream or a click away you know yeah to to make music that that is so to make music that is you know that can move move people beyond words is a very special thing mm -hmm. and um again just i'm so grateful to be in the position i am and i'm so grateful to even have people caring about me you know caring about my gear you know, caring about what I use, which is, it seemed like a distant dream. I was, you know, not too long ago, I was just fantasizing about these things. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah I they can be, they can, they can be a reality. Yeah. And you just have to push yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Just, it's, like sports you know you can't be you can't be an elite athlete without training every day you have to have structure you have to have purpose and you have to have a goal you have to have a vision um, and that vision can't be compromised by anything <laughs> <laughs> that's that's very true yeah, easier, said yeah. easier, easier said than done yeah definitely like, like most things yeah you should, you should feel it in your blood you should feel it in your bones. And I think that's as good as advice as I can give. Uh, and I think um, a lot of people would appreciate that. And I think also apart from the advice you've given, I've, I hope that also, you know, uh, fans of Polaris and fans of yours would also acknowledge the fact that, you know, you're constantly, um, you know, appreciating the fact that, you know, you have this right now and it's, it's, something i think you know something precious that uh, obviously a career is you know so every one of us have to work hard to get the career we want or to get to the position we want to be in and not me i mean not many people appreciate the fact that they're in where they want to be enough and i think um in your case you know i hope that you know with your words other people would see that it's also crucial and essential to you know constantly acknowledge what you've achieved and to also be um, thankful for what what you have. 
yeah and um, also let's hope that you know whoever you know with this chat i hope that people you know understand your decisions behind you know making this happen and how this all came about and hope and i hope that you know sales skyrocket yeah uh, <laughs> so i i really hope so you know and that that was the whole purpose of, of this yeah. this chat today yeah. it's it's been good getting to kind of round this chat up with you know a bit of philosophy yeah go ahead because oh no just the conversation we just yeah. had that's that's yeah. what I was talking about. Ah, okay. um, yeah, I mean, I yeah, I hope people can watch this and you know take some of this advice on. Um, yeah. You know, if yeah, if it helps, that's fantastic. And um, if you want to drop me a message, I literally spend hours of my day replying to fans and replying to people. That's good. Um, so. Yeah, hopefully if you see this and you're a fan of what I do and if you're a fan of what Polaris do, um, we really appreciate you. I really appreciate you and um, shred on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. All right. So then with that, Ryan, you know, I would like to thank you so much for, you know, taking the time uh, out to do this. And that's a very um, heartfelt message that you were sending out to your fans and to the fans of Polaris, you know, uh, yeah. just just right a few seconds ago. So and I'm pretty sure they will appreciate that as well. Yeah. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the chat as much as I did. And, you know, let's just hope more people see this, you know, in hopes that people would understand, you know, when they when they choose to buy the RSI six and RSI seven, they are making an informed, well informed decision. All right, so thank you so much, Ryan, and take care. Thank you as well, man. Cheers. Take care.